The dream is building machines that can go anywhere a person or animal can go. That's how I see the future. I'm Mark Rabert. I run Boston Dynamics. I was a graduate student at MIT. And we went to a lab where someone had a robot arm taken apart on the table. And I was a roboticist from that day on. Now we like to think that we're changing people's ideas of what robots can do. I'm not really the inventor. I'm the organizer. And really, it's the teams and the teamwork that end up with the designs of the robots and getting them working and all that. We think of many of our robots as being biologically inspired. We look at the things the animal can do and then say, okay, how can we, using human-made engineering techniques, build something that begins to approximate that? I think the most interesting thing about Spot is before we built it, we had done three different generations of quadruped robot. And I would have thought, with that much work that was done over maybe six years, that we weren't going to really see much improvement in behavior or in design. And boy, that just turned out to be wrong. Alpha Dog is a 800-pound robot that's designed to carry 400 pounds of payload and to travel about 20 miles. When I first started uh, in robotics, I got interested right away in how people worked and trying to build robots that were a little more like people. Atlas is a robot in roughly a human form. The robot has a bunch of sensors in its limbs and that are very important for its ability to balance and move. Every time a leg touches the ground, the robot can feel that, it knows the location of the ground. It means that it doesn't have to rely on the vision being so precise that it can see where a foot's going to touch, it can feel it. It's easy to just take for granted the capabilities that people have. But when people handle things, they don't just use their arm, they really use their whole body. And if you look carefully at uh, Atlas handling the box, it's really using its whole body in order to extend the reach of the arm. One of the things we do routinely with our robots 
is we show their ability to balance. Someone would go up to it, we wanted to be careful we didn't get hurt, so we would kick it with our foot. But people felt like we were being mean to the robot. Everybody's got their own idea of what the robot's thinking, and uh, they imagine much more than is actually going on in the robot's head. We feel more like proud parents showing off what our kids can do. It's not like we're giving them a hard time. One of our approaches to building robots, we call build it, break it, fix it. We just assume that we're going to uh, break the robot many times every day. Everybody knows that when there's like a really juicy crash that Raybert wants to see it. That's kind of fun. So one of the things that we've started to do recently is make it so our robots can stand back up after they've fallen down. If the robot can get back up again after it's fallen, you can go after very aggressive terrain. Just the, the thrill of uh, building a machine and seeing it do stuff that uh, no one has ever seen a machine do before. What could be better than that? Fighting fire with fire. Conventional wisdom says that's an exercise in futility. But at GE, we don't pay much attention to conventional wisdom. So we're going to conduct an experiment on Jason here to prove that you can fight fire with fire. Or, more accurately, with the sound of fire. The theory is intense bursts of sound cool flames, extinguishing them. Sound crazy? Well, actually, GE uses sound in a lot of innovations, including a new, more precise kind of mammogram that uses ultrasound instead of x-rays. But first, we need fire sounds. We'll need to mix these fire sounds to create the perfect frequency and intensity. We'll aim this sound at the fire with these modified speakers. Lots of them. Ready, Jason? Light him up. seems you can fight fire with fire. Sound. And if we can fight fire with fire, imagine the other impossible things we can do. Uh.